I haven't seen a horse more personable than a saddlebred. And they also like to show off ballerinas, the gymnasts of the horse world. The, the way that they perform in the show ring, it's like a work of art. Horses to music. And, and what I like most is the power. A lot of energy, they're dynamic. When they're, when they're doing their gates, it's almost like a dance. They're a kind horse. They just love human contact. If you love them, they love you back. And they're so uniquely Kentucky as well. Since they're a native breed to the state, there's a lot of support and enthusiasm surrounding the saddlebred in this part of the world that you don't really see anywhere else. I grew up in Germany and uh, with horses and in the beginning I was doing a lot of dressage. Then I saw the first time a saddlebred and I was so much fascinated. When I met Fred Sauer the first time and I said to him, listen, is this horse good enough? What do you think about the horse? And he said, you have to ship it to Kentucky. This is the only place where you can prove if it's good enough or something. So you have to be here. And uh, so I shipped my stallion from Germany. And finally this horse was shown at the World Championship. I was very happy and that for me it was a dream uh, to be here and to show the horse by myself. Yeah. As a young boy in South Africa, um, at my hometown, um, there was a big outdoor horse show. And we had Americans coming over there, judging the horses, Marty Miller, for example. And we had a five-gated um, world grand champion stallion that was shown there called Young America. And it was always my dream to, to have saddlebreds one day. And um, I started in 97 with a South African operation. I've bred a couple of, of horses, about eight horses that we, we took to South Africa. And then I come to the realization that Kentucky is the, the mecca of celebrate breeding. And that's why I wanted to bring him here. The saddlebreds in Kentucky are synonymous. The two words are synonymous. The, the American saddlebred horse used to be known as the Kentucky Saddler. In fact, the American Saddlebred Horse Association, which used to be the American Saddle Horse Breeders Association, was formed in 1892 by then General John Castleman, who was a Confederate colonel, then later pardoned by uh, President Johnson and became a Brigadier General in the U.S. Army. The Saddlebred is unique in that it was the stylish horse. It was the horse that gentlemen preferred to have. It was the preferred carriage horse for the ladies when they were going out for a, a very festive or, a, or a, an occasion that merited such a uh, flourish of uh, activity uh, from the standpoint of a horse that is, has the charisma and the uh, athletic proudness that uh, you see with it. And even the old saddlebreds still showed that when we go back and we look at the old photos and the old, bit, the old tapes uh, from back in the early 1900s. When you think about Spindletop Farm, you think about Spindletop Hall because the mansion of the yachts was so opulent. In 1935, when it was built, it took two years to build it at a cost of a million dollars in Depression era dollars. That speaks a lot for the, for the mansion itself. And of course, it's a host to a lot of alumni events at University of Kentucky, as well as a lot of horse events. There have been uh, actually uh, plays uh, regarding the history of Spindletop Farm that have been conducted actually in Spindletop Hall. Most importantly is the farm. And you have the um, research for breeding. You know, the stallion barn is in, is in, in effect. The broodmare barn, it has, you know, wonderful equipment. A lot, a lot of things are going on there, but equally important is the agriculture research that goes on the balance of the farm, including plant analysis. And uh, it's just uh, benefits the whole of the whole uh, agricultural school, if you would, but particularly the horse. My research program is about the genetics of horses and saddlebred horses have featured prominently in our work. Perhaps one of the most important projects that we've done for the horse was the DNA sequencing of the horse genome. Another saddlebred project was conducted by two graduate students at the Gluck Center. 
Saddlebred breeders asked us to investigate the genetics of swayback and saddlebred horses. The third project that was about saddlebreds was initiated by a visiting student from Brazil. Inia Regiatieri was interested in a gene that was discovered to have a big impact on gait in other breeds. In summary, we have enjoyed working with saddlebred horses and saddlebred owners and look forward to more interactions. The University of Kentucky's um, equine program is very necessary for the whole of the horse industry. It's, it's important to the saddlebred industry, but it's important to the whole of the horse industry. I've been fortunate to have been exposed to some of the research programs at Gluck that have gone on. And they've, the most wonderful group of scientists that you can imagine that are assembled and specifically only working for the benefit of the horse. This is very unusual from parasitology to gait analysis to reproduction to, and if you think about uh, really where they were put to the test was during the advent of the uh, mare reproductive uh, loss syndrome. And uh, the scientists at Gluck pulled it together and we learned what the cause was and how to correct it. I'm originally from Minnesota and I chose UK because I wanted to be in an area that had a lot of saddle horses. Because of our location being so close to the hotbed of saddlebred activity. I'm here every day and I love, I love being here. It's just like what my life has turned into and I love it. So I just couldn't imagine being somewhere not just down the road from the barn. I had to be here. Yeah, the great thing about our equine program at the University of Kentucky is that it is applicable across breeds, disciplines, all sorts of things because it is all-encompassing and the students learn not only the science behind the horse through classes like our equine health and disease and equine anatomy but they also learn the business aspects through classes like equine management and our farm management classes that they take through agricultural economics so they get a very well-rounded experience and learn about all types of things that impact horses and then students can really cut customize their degree to their specific career interests through the use of the emphasis areas. So we have three emphasis areas, equine science, equine business, and communications and leadership. And although students have to take at least the majority of their courses from their chosen emphasis area, there is some room for them to take, a, to take some of the emphasis area courses from the other areas. So again, it just provides further ability for students to really customize their degrees to them. To add to that, there's several minors that work very nicely with our program, animal science, agricultural economics, business, biology, community and leadership development. So the students can really create a niche for themselves. And then finally, our students will complete a 150 hour internship towards the end of their degree, which will give them some really specific hands-on experience in the area of their chosen profession. But that's why I came to UK though, was because of the, the opportunities that surrounded the school itself. So that not only could I, I gain a, a formal education and, and have the business classes and have the, the marketing, the management and the nutrition, but also to be able to have the immediate hands-on opportunities just down the road. Interns that we bring into the program from the University of Kentucky and other, other worlds too, they must apply what they have learned in their, in their courses. So they learn about hormone analysis, they learn about the heat cycles of the horses, they learn uh, about uh, embryos, embryonic development, they learn about spermatogenesis, they learn about a lot of things that, uh, that uh, so they get to apply uh, the science that they've taken on in school and it becomes uh, hopefully clear for them what, what they were doing uh, uh, during their time with us. We hope that all of our students will have a solid foundation in the areas of equine biology, equine management, um, some basic business skills, an appreciation for some of the main issues in the equine industry for a variety of breeds, including the saddlebreds, as well as an appreciation for how diverse the actual equine industry is. On top of that, we have an emphasis on both communication of communication skills, both oral and written, that our students should obtain. And then with the remainder of our degree, there's so many diverse options that depending on where the student wants to end up, there's a lot of courses that work well for them. A lot of the hands-on courses that 
um, were offered at UK really um, you know got you out into the field and not into and not necessarily in a classroom environment to learn and try new things. There's no better way to expand your education than to do hands-on activities like all those that are offered right here in Central Kentucky. All my life all I wanted to do was horses. I've always been that like horse loving kind of girl. Being on the team was kind of always in my future. Everybody is always so close. Horses have just been like my top priority all the time. I was like, well, I want to do the rest of my life with horses. I've always wanted to go to UK. Um, I've had lots of friends that have gone there and they loved the school and I love the location of the campus and I love Kentucky basketball, so Cats by 90. So potential future students who are interested in furthering their education with the Saddlebred Focus should look no further than the University of Kentucky. First of all, because we're located right here in the heart of Saddlebred country, not only in the country, but also in the world. There's no other place where you can find so many uh, businesses that are dedicated to the Saddlebred, whether it be facilities or service industries like veterinarians, reproductive specialists, and the list goes on and on. I came here to Lexington specifically so I could be involved with, with the immediate area between Lexington, Versailles, Shelbyville. Um, there are hundreds and hundreds of farms around here and there are loads of, of work opportunities on a variety of farms from training to breeding um, to all sorts of opportunities. It's, it's a wonderful place to be. And then also the teachers in the equine program were not just professors, they were actual horse people. Um, so you could bounce stories off of and get advice for, you know, real life situations and, um, you know, your conversations went beyond the classroom material and, um, you know, you're able to develop you know, relationships that will last you into your professional careers and industry careers and they'll always be there to, you know, back you and support you. I definitely believe that my passion translates into the education I provide to my students because I'm able to provide them with real world examples of what it's like to be an owner of horses, a breeder of horses, and just an owner and exhibitor of livestock in general. Kentucky is the best place in the world to be a horse person.